So I've got some brown, like craft colored tissue paper. And I'm just going to take this stamp that I have and some archival ink and cover the whole sheet. And we'll use that for part of the background. And here we go. And I don't mind if some of the images are darker than others, overlapped. Doesn't make any difference to me. And by the time we cut it down to fit, and this is going to be going in the Dylan Reevely's Large Dilution Journal, and I'm going to use it for a two-page spread, so this is a half sheet. It will more than cover the two pages in the large journal. And then some. So... And it, I think it kind of mimics old book text look. And I love the handwriting aspect of it. I like the graphic look to the handwriting. Okay. That's that's that. I'll be back. Okay, I wanted to show you this because I'm going to experiment with it. I found it in my stash and I think I years ago decided that I was going to try my hand at sculpting. And yeah, that never happened. I just, you know, I collect art supplies like, I won't even say like what. Anyways, it's called Rigid Wrap Plaster Cloth. And it's shown here, you know, it's mostly used for sculpting, but it's got, comes on a roll like this, and it's like smooth on this side and bumpy on this side, so I'm assuming the plaster is on this side. But I, I just cut some random shapes, and I want to see if, what kind of texture I can get if I try to adhere it to my background. So that's something else I'm going to play with here in a little bit. Okay, so I started um, gluing this tissue paper down in my journal. I cut it down so that one piece would fit across both pages. And I'm just using some matte medium. My handy dandy little squirt bottle here. That's empty, so I have, to, <laughs> I have to fill it up from my palette because I didn't fill the bottle. But anyways, just a light layer will do just to make it sticky enough to hold that tissue. And I, I want some wrinkles, so I'm not being extremely particular about um, getting this real smooth before I push it down into the matte medium. And as you'll notice, I also was not extremely particular about how I cut it out because I will be going around the edges with paint and Stabilo and um, so I don't, I didn't really care that it didn't go all the way to the edges. I just kind of eyeballed it and cut it uneven on purpose. So then I'm just going to Flip these corners so my pages don't start curling. And I will dry this and I'll be back. Okay, so I started playing with this rigid wrap and it's kind of cool. Um, I, maybe you've used it before. I have used the gauze and, and different things, but nothing that has been already impregnated. Like this is plaster. So you can see here, it smooths out. You don't really end up keeping those little holes 
but because um, the plaster fills it in, but I just dipped it in my water basin and got it wet. And let's see where we want this. I put it down, the so plaster side was on top so I could smooth it. And then I just smoothed it with my finger. I'm going to do a little less this time and see if I can keep some of those holes but still get the plaster wet enough that it will stay on the page. I didn't put any glue or anything. I kind of didn't think I really needed any. I do like the way it kind of frays on the edges if you work at it a little bit harder. Some of those strings pull out. I like that. And if you do this, make sure you use the permanent ink on the tissue paper when you stamp so that this gets pretty wet and anything else that you're going to go on top of it with is going to be wet too so you don't want it to be running all over the place um, or you could if you don't have a permanent ink use what you have and then use a workable fixative like this um, to seal it before you go on top with another wet layer so let's get another one of these on here. Oh, I got that one really wet. Oh, that one mushed out of shape. I really like that. I can scrunch it up and get some peaks and valleys and some good texture. I'm going to get some of that water off of there, though. And I like the way the plaster stays around the edges. So get it really wet and scrunch it up. I'm going to try that with a little square piece here and see. Maybe I just got that one wetter than I did the other ones. Let me know if you've used this. It's called Rigid Wrap. Okay, now it's one to itself. There we go. Kind of squished it and then held it as I pushed it down so that it would kind of stay where into the shape I squished it into. And I find if you go back and forth like that, it kind of releases more of that plaster. Yeah, I really like this stuff. We'll see when I go over it. I wonder if I can still, oh yeah, this is still wet enough that I can scrunch it up a little bit too. I like that better than just laying flat. Give me a couple ridges in there. That one's dry enough that it's pretty much stuck. Okay, one more. One more. Let's see what we want to do here. I'm going to Go across the fold, why not? So as I do that, it kind of releases or solubilizes, is that a word? Dissolves <laughs> the plaster and it is just like gauze. I like like they used to put on, I don't think they use that anymore, but like the old fashioned, when you break your arm and they'd cast you and they'd wrap this, wrap it and wrap it and wrap it around your arm. Now they use some kind of hot, it's similar, but it gets hot. I've never broken a bone or had a cast, but my kids have had plenty. Okay. Got kind of some of that plaster and strings out onto the page. That's a good one. All right. Okay, I'm going to dry this and see what happens when I dry it. Okay. We're all dry. 
took a long time to dry these little plaster bits. Um, and then I went over the entire page and the plaster pieces with um, matte medium just to make sure that everything was sealed down really well. I did get a hole right here in my tissue paper, but that's okay. Um, just more texture. And then I dried that all off. So now we're ready for the next step. So I found uh, jelly print waste papers that I kind of like the colors of because I wanted to bring some color into this background, but not bright. So I found two papers that I like and I tore some of those pieces up and then I have two different book papers, tech, book text papers um, that I think I will also glue down. So I'm going to get all this glued down and dried and then we'll see where we want to go with this. I'm not sure yet. Okay, everything is dry and I've reclipped my pages. Um, I made some acrylic sprays it's, I can't remember the recipe right now, but I can put it in the description below. But it is um, a combination of acrylic paint, like a craft viscosity paint, water, and alcohol. And I bought spray bottles from Amazon. There were like eight for, I don't know, $12 or something. And I was all excited. I made all my sprays, all different colors, mixed them all up, found little ball bearings to put in there so that they mix really well. And after two sprays out of each bottle, the nozzle was clogged, even though I turned it upside down and sprayed it when I was done and wiped it off. And then within a couple more sprays, they would not work at all. The, the nozzles just went fluey and they were done. So they, I, I did get a refund for part of them from Amazon. They're usually pretty good about that. You just have to be nice when you call. Um, so then I got these Soho Urban Artist Spritz Bottles from Jerry's Artorama. They are fantastic. They have a non-clogging nozzle. I don't know if you can see that. They're four ounce bottles. They're nice and heavy. They're not real flimsy. Like you're not gonna squeeze them. So they work really good. So I have this mustardy yellow color mixed up and I'm just going to spray and drag and see how that looks. Maybe let some drip. So here we go. And I made these kind of transparent. They're not real opaque. So We'll be able to see everything through them, but it will just give a little more color to the background. I find lately I've been doing an awful lot of like brown and burnt sienna and black, and I think I'm getting kind of dreary in my pages. So this one's, I'm not. A huge fan of super bright colors. I never have been. Well, back in the 60s I was when we all wore, you know, pop art clothes. And yeah, I'm old. But um, I kind of like subdued, softer colors. Sometimes just darker colors. So I'm going to go this way on this side. I hope you can see this. My camera is kind of up high so I can't really check it very often to see what you're seeing. Maybe I can look while I'm letting this drip, make sure you can see it. I think you can. And then if I turn it this way, we'll see. I'm just gonna let those drip. Okay, like that. I like that. Turn my bottle upside down and give it a spray inside of my paper bag I have over here in my waste basket and I'll wipe the nozzle off even though it says non-clogging I still do that and let's see do I have another one 
Oh, let's try some purple. Why not? Since I said I have gotten dreary lately. So you just want to look and make sure that the paint isn't accumulated in the bottom anymore. And the drop in a ball bearing in there, a little bead if you have, you know, some smallish beads. Anything that will help with that. And I'm just going to go light here just to get a little more color on there. And then I'm going to just kind of dab through that purple with a baby wipe and give it a little more of a mottled look. I have no idea where I'm going with this, by the way. I work like this pretty often, just kind of intuitively flying by the seat of my pants kind of thing. Sometimes I end up liking it, sometimes I don't. But, you know, that's the great thing about paint. You can just always paint over it. I do like the texture I'm getting from those little plaster things. I'm do a little more on there. Whoops, that went sideways on me. That's okay. All right. <clears throat> Maybe I should have used green instead of the purple with this dark turquoisey green. Not turquoise, but you know, tealy green. I don't have any of that mixed up, so okay. I'm not going to make you watch me dry every time, so I'm going to be back when it's dry. Okay, everything's dry, and I decided I do want to bring some more of this um, greenish color into this a little bit. So went in my stash, and I found Ceramcoat Woodland Night Green. Um, back in the 80s, I had a storefront studio where I taught painting classes and stenciling classes, and so some of these paints are still good, and they're from way back in the day, but this was the right color, so that's what I grabbed, and I just watered it down some, and I am going, this needs color up here anyway, so I'm just going to dab it all the way across here. And then, yeah, I have it tilted because I'm going to spray it. I didn't have to tilt it now, but I did anyway. Okay, and I'm just going to make it a little heavier in through here so we get some good drips. And I will take my spray bottle. And this is just water. Get kind of close. <clears throat> Yeah, that's, that's better. And I'm just going to darken this up a little bit here while it's wet. I like the way that ended up in there. And this followed the little, I had a ridge in that plaster right there. It just kind of followed that ridge. Let it go a little more. And the thing about these drips, they dry as you can see over here. They do dry lighter than what they look like initially. I probably should carry this over here. I'm not going to drip it on this side, but I'm just going to cover some of this white space here. And then wipe it with a baby wipe. Pull it down the page. Just to share the green. Push that paper back a little bit. Ooh, let's get some on that plaster too. The nice thing about this plaster is <clears throat> even around the edges where it's smeared out with my finger, 
I'm getting texture there too when it dried. It dried um, with some texture, so that was a bonus. I'm gonna mop this up a little bit. And I'm just dipping my baby wipe right in that paint, and we'll bring it along here. Little bits here and there just to get everything looking a little more cohesive, I think. Yep, yeah, I'm liking that better. Okay, I'm going to draw it. Okay, I'm back. Um, just an aside, after I dried this, I went to get a fresh cup of coffee and I thought I better wash my hands because I don't know, you know, how hard it'll be to get the plaster stuff off. It took a pretty long time to get the plaster off and it was just re thin residue. It wasn't gobs of it or anything. So just to, if you use that stuff, better to wash your hands sooner rather than later. Okay. So I decided I'm going to put some circles on here and, um, maybe journal within those circles later. So I'm just using my little, this these tiny little ones, I don't even know what they're called. It's just like a little CD. Anyways, I'm just gonna take my Stabilo and run around here. Put one there and here. <clears throat> a fairly heavy line with the Stabilo. And I need some, I think I'm just gonna use white and fill those in. And I should be able to catch the edge of those circles with my brush and then that Stabilo will activate. more water on the edge of my brush. And I should end up with a nice shadow around there from the Stabilo. And I got a nice gob of dry paint in there. Come here. And there's one. I hope you can see. I don't know if my hand is in the way or not. Sorry if it is. Got a little more white in there. Yeah, that'll do. These will dry fast. I'm just going to go ahead and dry them. <laughs> All my stuff is in front of me here, so in my camera overhead, I'm not real sure whether I'm sticking my head in or not. Okay. I'm going to contemplate on this for a few minutes and decide where to go next. Okay, um, I want to try and push some of this back and soften the whole thing. So I am going to put a glaze over 
the whole works and then soften it back. So I just mixed up some Americana Antique Gold with the white that I had left in my palette and then mixed in um, about a quarter, not quite a half of the clear glaze medium. And I'm just gonna go over the whole thing with this color. I maybe should have, late, too late now, but I maybe should have sprayed this with a fixative before I did this, but we'll see what happens with it. Just get a layer on there. Everything's covered. And then I have a um, softening brush. I used these, I had a faux painting business back in the early 90s for um, doing faux painted walls, um, residential walls. So anyways, that this I used an awful lot, but I think it will work for this too. And I'm just gonna barely go across and I need a rag to wipe off the excess and just flicking it with the very tips of this brush in every direction. And the idea is to, I think I'm gonna take some of that off. It's just a little heavier than what I wanted. I'm gonna wipe some of it back just with this baby wipe and go at it again. And you see how it just, it kind of brings everything together in a more cohesive way as compared to here where you're seeing each individual element, each thing is kind of sticking out on its own, which is fine if that's what you're going for. But I'm kind of just <clears throat> looking for a background here that I can do something with a focal on top of it that's almost dry and just keep flicking it till you see it's not moving anymore so that's pretty much it and do the other side not put quite as much on this time as I did on the first page and it's also going to stick down in the peaks and valleys of the plaster and the paper and okay you got to work kind of fast because you don't want the I mean the glazing medium does extend your open time so you have longer to work with the acrylic before it really starts to set up and dry. But you still want to work kind of kind of quickly so that you don't end up with spots that are splotchy. You want you're going for kind of an overall softening. And occasionally wipe that excess paint that you picked up in the brush, wipe it off so you're not just wiping it back on again. Now if I wanted to highlight some of these areas, I could go in with a baby wipe and uh, do that. Here, let's, let me get a clean one and we'll maybe in these circles. I can pick up a little bit of that. It's not going to totally wipe back, but we can lighten it up. Let some of that background show through a little bit. Had I done that one, as soon as I finished this page, I would have gotten more off like I did that one. Maybe a little bit on the tops of some of these pieces of plaster too. Bring back a little bit of that 
white and you can see the texture a little bit better. Not too much. I'm going to hit him with the brush again. Okay, a little bit more right here. Bring that texture forward again. What do you think? Tell me what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Would you do it? Every day is an experiment. Okay, so in that, so you, if you're interested, Valspar Corporation, it's a three inch softening brush. I'm sure, and it's, like I said, it's from the 90s, so um, I'm sure there's something equivalent to that out there if that one's not still available. I like that size, the three inch really covers just enough territory across this size journal page or a canvas. Um, I know you can get them smaller, but then you're just making more um, passes and you're more likely to get streaks, which is also cool. So, you know, experiment if you wanna try it and see what you like the best. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave this right here it's a, it was a fun background. Um, we experimented a little bit with the plaster wrap stuff and some papers and uh, then did a little glazing at the end to kind of bring it all together and tone it all back. So join me for the next video later this week. And I'm going to continue on this background and bring in some focal points and do some journaling and some final embellishments. And we'll see where it goes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.